Let's go to the Big Apple, New York City, New York. Brian joins us there. Brian, how can we help? Yes, how you doing? Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, should I take a consolidated loan or a personal loan to pay off credit card debt in efforts to improve my credit score and build credit history? I'll give you the short answer. No. <laughs> And I'll, and I'll tell you why, Brian, you know, when people go to shift their debt around, um, there's one time that we actually say that it's not necessarily a terrible idea. And it's if you have, you know, a larger debt, but you're able to get a loan that's less interest rate and you're, you're in the works to pay it off. Um, then sometimes we're like, you know what, it makes sense. And you can do that because your behavior was already that I'm going to be paying this debt off. But just hearing your question and the motivation why to do that, I would say no, um, because our goal with our fun, with our money, at least what we teach on this show, is to be completely debt free and not to be at the mercy even of a credit score. And so we even teach to the point that you become debt free and within t around 12 to 18 months after you become completely debt free, that credit score starts to actually go down to undetermined and you end up not really even having a credit score. So. That's something that we talk about on the show. So in, to, in order to improve a credit score is, no, is not a reason we would do a financial move or what I would suggest that you do. So what kind of debt is it in general? Is it all, is it all credit cards? Yeah, it's, it's all credit card. It's, it's only around $7,500. Um, I don't have a lot of credit history, so I thought paying back a loan would help show some type of credit history. Yeah, and it, and it would. But again, my, my goal for you then – my goal for you is to still just pay this off and not to work your your money and your financial plan around the credit score because you can still today live life without a credit score. You can even get a mortgage without a credit score through manual underwriting. So I don't want the credit score to be the motivation of why you do things because it's basically an I love debt score. Every way that your credit score is calculated is an interaction with debt, whether it's the type of debt you have, the new types of debt you bring on, how often you pay your debt. I mean, it's all calculated around debt. And again, having no debt and being completely debt free gives you so many other options in life and such freedom, which is which is what we is what we talk about on the show. Now, what's your plan to pay off the 7500 if you were not to get a loan? You had a timeline? Um, I do. Probably in the next 12 months. I have the money to pay it off. I'm paying it off little by little. My, I just, my, my long-term thing is I'm stuck at a credit score at like 660 for a long time. And I want to, I want to raise that. I guess I'm focused on that credit score, but Why? also I want to, I want to show that I could pay a loan off because I do want to get a, a mortgage in the next, you know, 24 to 36 months. So I'm just wondering how, how to, well, you don't need, things. as Rachel's addressed this, you don't need a credit score to get a loan for a house. That's mm -hmm. a that's a cultural myth, number one. Yeah, number two, and again, Rachel's made this very clear, and I agree with her 100. percent But you realize your credit score will go up when you pay off the credit cards <laughs> momentarily. <laughs> you know, yeah. because it showed that you paid them off. Well, it jumped for uh, for a short amount of time. It shows that you paid off the credit cards. How much money do you have in savings right now? I, uh, you guys are gonna let, uh, get mad. I, I have enough money to pay off my the, the debt. Um, I have around nine or nine ninety five hundred in uh, savings. Um, so I know it doesn't make sense. Probably I know I should just probably pay that off. But it's like that cushion to know that I have money in savings. I guess that's why I'm holding. How much on money to that. do you make? What's your salary? What's your net take home? Uh, eighty five thousand. Okay. Rachel, I mean, he can replenish but I have some that. Expenses, he can replenish that. Expenses. Yeah, but yeah. you can pay off what his other credit debt, cards. What other debt do you have, Brian? I uh, just have a car lease and um, child support. Okay. My main two monthly okay. payments. Yeah. Well, I if I were in your position, I probably wouldn't be buying a home in the next 24 months. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit longer for you just from, again, doing it in a way that all of this is a blessing and not a curse. And our goal was for you be financially free to be able to build wealth. And the fastest way to do that from point A to point B, what we found is being completely debt free. So yeah, paying this off, replenishing that emergency fund. Cause I get it. And, 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 and we hear you that like, it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm only gonna have $2,000 where we even teach it. Just have a thousand dollar emergency fund and pay all your debt off. Yeah. And that urgency there 
will also be the motivation for you to build up that emergency fund that much faster. So building up a three to six months worth of expenses and then a good down payment. So again, it may take, I mean, you could, you maybe be able to do that in, in two years, depending on all your living expenses, being in New York, you're in an expensive place. Um, but yeah, being able to get out of this car lease, all of that, just being completely freed from payments. And I, and Brian, I just, we've just, we've studied this for over three decades and have been focused on people building wealth, lasting wealth. And the whole idea of the credit score, I just got to tell you, it is just part of this toxic money industry where they keep you in this, in this system. And again, you're, you have to con continue to accumulate new debt to continue to up that credit score as well. There's, there's different parts of this equation. And so again, playing that game over and over and over at the far end, it doesn't get you to a point no. where you really can build wealth fast in a sense from point A to point B in the right way. No. Um, so I just wouldn't, I wouldn't play the credit score game. I really wouldn't, Brian, if I, if I woke up tomorrow and I was you, I'd pay off this credit card. I would see about the car lease, which is a whole other conversation, figuring out, can you get out of it? Is there a buyout? Where are you at in the car lease? Uh, get out of that. Focus, yeah, the child support, making sure that that's funded and paid for, and then start saving up uh, for your emergency fund. And I would just continue down the baby steps um, because, again, it is the plan that we have found has created wealth for people uh, and had a level of getting out of this toxic money culture that so many people are stuck in. And I just, oh, and Brian, this is not at you. I was not disgusted at you. I'm just, the credit card industry is just frustrating. Oh. It's frustrating keeping people in this cycle of just being in it. And it's like, and even on TV, I'm like, you see all these commercials, all these celebrities and they're yeah. promoting all cash back, you know, all of this stuff. And I'm like speaking to the population that's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to pay extra money for a middleman to use money that I don't have. And, and then you get stuck in it. When you actually yep. look at people paying, living paycheck to paycheck, and you look at the interest rate on these credit cards, up, rate up, is up to, yeah, up to 25, 30% can be. Yeah. And then you look at the math and it's like, and that keeps compounding. And if you miss a payment and you don't pay it off in full, that interest is added on. And if you're already living to paycheck to paycheck, you're already dug in a hole and they just feed. Yeah. The industry feeds off yeah. of that part of the population. And it just makes yeah. me mad. Well, there's a, it is a myth. And they make so much to money have... too, by the way, oh, America. They're making so much oh, money. So it's a much game money. and they're winning. But, you know, a mortgage company does not care about your credit score. They care about how much down payment you have and do you show a financial history where you're stable. He's going to be able to say, hey, I paid off $7,500 in credit card debt. I've got a 20% down payment. And that's why we endorse. And here's my income. Here's all my other bills. All my things. cable, myself, everything that's I pay That's what they're looking at. Yes. They're not looking at credit score. And, um, you know, it's, I, I don't have a credit score. You know, I don't have a credit. You score. don't have one either. <laughs> so it's like, but but no one, you know, no, that doesn't mean that you don't have financial stability. And I think that there's this cultural myth that you look like a flake, when in all reality, if you do what you just told him to do, Brian, Brian, if you do what Rachel said, you're not going to be looked at as a flake. You're going to look at as somebody who, yeah, I'm happy to give you a loan. And for here's a home. the insane thing about the credit score too. To your point, that people believe like, okay, that means I'm good. It, it's like this number of I'm good, quote unquote, with management. It's like a status symbol. Yeah. And I'm like, Brian's great, great aunt's dog walker, Julia, who he doesn't even know, no. left him in her will. Yes. And she dies tonight. He wakes up tomorrow. He gets a phone call. And he's, they're like, you've inherited $6 million. Your credit score is still exactly the same number, Brian. This is true. You she could, makes you a very a, good you point. You could have a net worth of millions of dollars more. And it doesn't change your credit. Like, it's not an indication that you're winning with money. It's an indication yeah. that you're hanging out with the bank and just yeah. in debt and doing all this stuff. Oh, I, I love like it. it. I love angry Rachel. <laughs> Folks, by the way, this is this is like her actual anger. It's not even real anger. <laughs> it's just like it's like a character on Saturday Night Live and I'm here. If you're for my it. kids, you might see my real anger. Well, that real. may be true. But she's right. <laughs>